This thing on? Mic check. I just want to make sure y'all can hear me clearly. Yo. Should you practice art? Or should art be your practice? I had a question, so I asked it. Not to anyone specifically, but to my inner guide, you know? The one that's gonna be a master. The one that's more than a rapper. The one that's an educator. The one that seeks enlightenment. He travels with concepts. He's got the mindset expansive. He overstands that his time combined with travel and concepts makes his mind convex. Sort of like when you look at a brain scan. Reggie here, and I want to welcome you to another one of my live streams. This is Comics Today, a show that we do on Wednesday to celebrate the best day of the week, that being a new comic book day. And as part of this show, we typically highlight the new books that people are picking up at their LCSs. We shout out the LCS. We talk about some news and current events, and we typically have a guest or two on to help us to make sense of something that is happening in the world of comics and collectibles. And above all else, we also have a good time. And I think we are going to get to all of the things that I just mentioned. I want to give a huge shout out to the gentleman that says that he does not like my thumbnails. Tonight's thumbnail is dedicated to you, sir, because whenever I read your comments, that is the look that I have on my face. Seriously, want to give a shout out to ComicsPriceGuide.com. I partnered up with them uh, over the last few months to uh, put out a series of videos in which we highlight comics that you may actually have in your collection that you might want to pull out and examine and figure out whether these are books that you actually want to have graded. And so I partner up with them to highlight a couple of books. We, we identify where you may want to draw the line in the sand of a grade or no grade type of scenario. It's a great way, I think, through this video to identify some cool books, to spend a couple of dollars and invest into your collection by getting those books graded and realizing the value increase that comes with going from a raw book to a graded book. Uh, the video was released, uh, this month's video was released earlier this week. It is it is done pretty darn well. If you have not seen it, I definitely want to encourage you guys to check it out. There's a couple of really cool books uh, that are highlighted in there. I just finished up reviewing somebody else's books that they're like, hey, I don't know where this might grade out. Just gave them some feedback on their uh, book a few moments ago. Again, if you have not seen this video sponsored by ComicsPriceGuide.com, I encourage you to check it out because I do believe that it is a good video. So uh, I want to go to the chat here in a moment to figure out what it is that you guys may have picked up at your LCSs. If you picked up something good, let us know what you picked up. If you want to shout out your LCS, do that. If you had a chance to read something that was pretty good that we should prioritize by putting on the top of our reading stacks, let me know that. And I'm also going to show you guys a couple of books that have shown up here at the house uh, this month or no, next month. I guess it's next month at this point. Next month's Patreon giveaway is going to be this book right here. This is Oblivion Song Compendium. Uh, this is from the folks over at Skybound. They are sending me all kinds of really good stuff. This is a massive collected work. I'm guessing a thousand pages or so in this thing. We're going to be giving this away to one lucky Patreon member. There's no page numbers, uh, but a really gorgeous book. So somebody's going to get this. I think it's a value of 50 bucks. Um, collects uh, Oblivion Song 1 through 36. So a lot of really good stuff. If you haven't signed up for Patreon, consider doing it. You might actually be the lucky winner of that really awesome book. All right, let me go to uh, to the chat real quick to see what it is that you guys are talking about. Let me see. Richard, it's good to see you, brother. Welcome, welcome. Tina's always in the house. Tina, it is good to see you. Victor, how you doing, brother? What is that? Victor says, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, number one, first prince, at a fantastic price in mid condition. Uh, man, I've come so close to buying the original Turtles book a few times, not because I'm a, a big Turtles fan, but there's a possibility that my kid will be a Turtles fan. So I'm like, that's a great historical book uh, that will, will have some value that he might actually enjoy at some point. So I keep staring at it and I'm always uh, debating it. Uh, Wellbore is up in here. Where'd he go? I had you clicked and then it disappeared. Where did where the heck did you go, brother? 
let me see. I'm scrolling through it. I'm trying to see if I, I can't find you. Uh, Steve, Steve's on the board. He says, I'm enjoying reading Antarctica uh, number two this week, a solid series. Number one was good. I will tell you that. I said that before, after I finished reading it, I read it and I was like, I don't know where this is going, but I am intrigued. I have not yet read issue number two, but Steve's on the board saying that it is a good read. Uh, scrolling through some of the comments here. There it is. Well, board. there it is. He says, void rivals and Icon versus Hardware today are the two books that he picked up. I just so happen, I just so happen to have some Void Rivals here on the desk. The folks at uh, Skybound hooked me up with these books, and then I also purchased them from uh, Nirvana. But these are the these are the ones that came in from us uh, from Skybound today, or no, I guess uh, the other day. They came in the other day, but again, I also buy. A, a couple of the copies from Nirvana, my LCS. Uh, so they sent me these couple of cool books. I have not yet read it, to be honest, but hoping to, hoping to get to it here in a few moments. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, Psycho Pirate. What is that? Restore the, the Snyderverse and Retcon. Okay. We have to let that go. <laughs> we, we really, we really do have to move beyond Snyderverse and and Henry Cavill, it's over. It's so over. It's unbelievable how over it is. We just have to move on and deal with what we actually have. That's what we have to do. That That's my advice. Southern Comic Geek, it is good to see you, brother. Uh, let me see. Trev. Trev's up in here. Trev, the shipping guru. Some kid Venom spec. Uh, Night Terrors, Wonder Woman, uh, Void Rival, Something is Killing the Children, Darth Vader, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There you go. Uh, waiting on my graded comics to get back, month four. Lee, the best advice that I could give you, sir, and I don't know who you sent yours to, whether it's uh, CGC, uh, whether it's CBCS, whether it's EGS, whether it's PGX, uh, send it and forget it. As hard as that is to do it, just let, just forget about it, brother. Like the Snyder verse, just forget about it. And then one day when your books show up, you will be pleasantly surprised at how quickly they showed up. Uh, you will drive yourself crazy uh, checking the website every day for status. Trust me when I tell you, picked up the death of Venom verse. Uh, Kid Venom uh, says uh, zero. Uh, scrolling through some of the comments here, Frog Brawler. How you doing, brother? Hey, uh, that's cool. Frog Brawler, you actually show up in a different color. You show up in a different color, I think, because you're a member of uh, of the channel. You show up green even here in my interface, which is not a uh, YouTube interface. That's kind of cool. It's rare that I see anything different uh, in this interface for whatever reason. Uh, for our brother says, got a real, real cool package in the mail. And then on top of that, picked up Venom Boy book, the Alex Ross uh, X-Men's one and a couple of other books, including Alpha Flight. Has anybody read Alpha Flight yet? I, if you saw my post on Instagram, I am pumped about reading Alpha Flight. Uh, I have not picked it up. I'm looking forward to reading that one. If somebody read it and it was good, let me know that. If you read it and it was bad, uh, just don't say anything. Don't ruin it for me. Let me let me be excited about the possibility of, of Puck being dope in the new Alpha Flight. Uh, scrolling through, uh, Don said, oh, sorry, Dan says, nothing new for me. I like my comics to be at least as old as me. <laughs> I respect that, brother. I recently received Batman Beyond the free comic book day ed edition, says Kenny. Congrats to you, brother. Uh, scrolling down, Mark is on the board. He picked up some good stuff. Uh, Death to the Toy Maker, number one. Uh, something epic, number four. It's on number four already. Wow. Uh, and the Magic Order, along with some other books. Kevin's up in the room. How you doing, brother? It's good to see you. Scrolling down through some of the comments here. Um, maybe, maybe it's, I don't know, Matt, you show up different as well. You show up on uh, green as well. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, maybe there's something else at play here. Um, uh, pastor pastors on the board. You are very welcome, brother. If, if you take a look at my comments, which I, I made really quickly right before the show, and you look back at your book, you should be able to see exactly what I'm describing. I think we we all have the tendency when we are grading our own books 
to maybe not see them as clearly as others might. And that's why having another party look at them can be uh, advantageous. So, so look at my comments, look back at the book. You should see exactly what I'm, what I'm seeing, but fingers crossed uh, what I said in, in the, in the uh, brief email was, was helpful. Scrolling through uh, Steve White says, picked up, what is that? Picked up nine books this week, need to trim the fat. So the, the meat, the meat, if you will, is Void Rivals, Death of Venomverse, uh, Brian Moore, Brian Moore, is that, I guess that's Bryn Moore, Bryn Moore, I've, I've not heard of that, I've not heard of that, what if, and a few more other books, there you go, that's what's up, uh, got my, Lisa's got my Spider-Man CD-ROM collection, Milt's up in here, it's good to see you, Milt, uh, really light week at the LCS, looking forward to reading Red Sonia, Void Rivals, and some Walking Dead stuff. That's what's up. Scrolling through the comments here, Liger Style is trying to convince Doug to do a uh, a good girl cover for Isolation. I'm going to allow uh, Liger King and Doug to fight that out in the streets. I'm sure that they will come to some resolution on, on that one. Uh, Joe, Joe is on the board. He said he received two packages in the mail, but has not opened them yet. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Brother, people are still talking about Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill has not had a, a long-term contract for Superman since I think 2018 or 2019. Somebody might have to fact check me on that. He was forced into the Shazette, the uh, Black Adam movie by, by The Rock, but he has not actually had a long-term contract since like 2018, 2019. And people are still like, so when are we getting Henry Cavill? It's over. It's over. It is so, it is so over. We, we just have to, we just have to move on from Henry Cavill. Uh, scrolling, <laughs> scrolling down. I'm gonna make a couple of people mad tonight. I, I, I feel it. I feel it. Uh, scrolling through, uh, Richard, well, Richard, thank you for stopping by. R Richard has a honeydew list that is shown up, uh, so from his wife. So I'm going to allow <laughs> brother. It, it never, it never goes away. You'll, you'll be, you'll be amazed at how many articles I see on a daily basis that deal with some aspect of the Snyderverse that I just skip over because I'm like, we, we have, we have to just let it go. We have to let it go. It is, it is over. It is done. Uh, and we are moving on. Scrolling through some of the comments here, uh, picked up uh, Alpha Flight number. There you go. That's what's up. Scrolling through some of the comments, Alpha Flight number one. Um, scrolling, scrolling. I don't know what the green is because Frog Brawler is signed up for a membership here on the channel. So I assumed that that was that. Um, Matt Woods may be showing up uh, because he's a blue wrench, but there's like a logo behind it. I'm, I'm so confused. I'm so confused. I don't know what you guys are seeing and how it might be different from, is he, is he a new channel member? Matt Woods. Thank you, brother. Thank you for signing up. It, it, I'm so confused. I'm so confused. I haven't received a notification that you were a channel member. So, uh, that's part of the reason why I am so confused by that. Um, scrolling down through the comments here. Um, scrolling through Pat pastors, he, he's revising his, his grade on his copy of, uh, secret wars issue number one. Uh, originally the thought was a 9.4 and now the revision is possibly a 9.2 pastor. I am actually going to agree with you. You're going to be somewhere. I think between a 9.0 and a 9.2, as I mentioned, without being able to see all four corners, it's tough. And without actually having the book in my hand to be able to angle it, to be able to see what defects might be present, it's tough. Um, but I, I think an adjustment is warranted based upon the feedback that I gave you. So uh, fingers crossed again that that was helpful to you. Scrolling through some of the comments here, I am way behind. Um, oh, there you go, Tina. <laughs> Tina, thank you. Tina, thank you for thank you for explaining to me what is happening with the channel because I was so lost. Uh, Brew, haha! I have not seen you in quite some time. Welcome to the live stream again. If you if you are in here right now, look at me. If you are in here right now and you have not yet subscribed to the channel, I want to encourage you to go ahead and do so. 
If you are here in the live stream and you have enjoyed what you have heard thus far, I want to encourage you to give the video a thumbs up. It is all good for the algorithm. So let's go ahead and uh, let me show you guys some of the other books that showed up here. This is Arcade Kings. Arcade Kings, what issue is this? I don't know what issue that is. Arcade Kings, maybe three. The folks at Skybound sent me some stuff and uh, little by little, I am sending these out. Some of the orders that I received for Isolation Issue 4, uh, there are folks that are recipients of some of these items. Some Patreon members are going to be recipients of these items. And then I may just put together a couple of AOKs and start to get some of this stuff out of here. Uh, but some really cool books that have shown up here at the house from the folks at Skybound. I am definitely appreciative of them for hooking me up every single month. It allows me to give some stuff back to the comic book community, it gives me an opportunity to actually read some of these books as well, uh, cuts down on some of my spending. So I'm definitely appreciative of that. All right. So the very first thing, the very first thing that I wanted to talk about is the comic book community awards. I do believe that this is the third year of the awards. And as the name implies, uh, the awards are designed to allow the community to recognize content creators who regularly produce entertaining, thought-provoking, and helpful comic book-related content. Everyers have solicited uh, input and feedback from the community itself. They've made refinements and improvements to just about every aspect of the awards from the, the nomination process to the, to the timeline in, in which the nominations are open uh, to the scope and the number of categories that are available. I think that the, the number of categories have grown. Uh, I saw one just, uh, just yesterday for uh, Blue Wrench. Uh, and that was a one, that was one that surprised me that jumped out at me. Um, but the nomination period for the comic book community awards for 2023, uh, just wrapped up in early August. And I wanted to have the man behind the awards on the show tonight to provide us with a little bit of update as to where things are. And I actually invited him on the show the other day, but I had to cancel the show because I wasn't quite feeling up to par, uh, but I'm glad we were able to make magic today. So I want to welcome to the show, my man, Brian. It is good to see you, brother. Thanks, Reggie. Thanks for having me again. And, and my apologies for having to cancel on you the other day. The, the wrist was not... It was not cooperating, brother. It was, I was uncomfortable. So yeah, uh, no worries. Apologies for that. Thank you for accepting my invite to join today. Um, but, but Brian, um, the nomination period, I do believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, ran from May to early August. And we are now moving into a, a new phase of the comic book community awards called the committee review. I don't know what that means. <laughs> so, so confirm that that was the nomination period, that that was the period. And then also talk a little bit about what this community review period is. Sure. Yep. So yeah, we ran from May to August for nominations and, you know, the nomination period is really for the community to vote or nominate their favorite channels in, in the categories that we have. And so once that's done, uh, the committee takes a couple weeks to review that information, that data that we, you know, the, all of the nominations that we collect, and just make sure that the nominated channels or creators fit the categories. Because sometimes it's a, you know, it's a kind of an open ballot, so you can freeform type in your channel. So, you know, sometimes people put channels in maybe a, diff a wrong category that they don't belong in, or we do have some tiers for different sub counts. So sometimes channels get mixed up with the sub count numbers. So the committee helps me review that information, validate that we have the right people in the right buckets. And uh, one of the big functions of the committee is the, committee is the Lifetime Achievement Award. Hmm. It, we do take open nominations for Lifetime. So we the committee looks at that, and then we select the five finalists for that. You know, we want to make sure that you know, it, the Lifetime Achievement Award is a, a bigger award uh, in, in my mind. You know, we want to make sure that the channels that are nominated there have a body of work, a present, you know, a, a long presence on on YouTube, um, that they're community, you know, builders and and good standing members of the community. So, yeah. 
Um, but we do include that in the finalist votes. Again, we, we want to get the community's feedback on who they think the, the, you know, the Lifetime Achievement Award should go to. And the committee will look at that. And then it's kind of like the presidency. You have the popular vote and the uh, electoral college. Um, you know, typically the committee is going to go with the popular vote. But, you know, just in case if we think somebody is, you know, didn't get the nominations or the votes and is really, really deserving for a particular reason, you know, the committee may do that. But that's the only award that the committee really has um, uh, oversight on. We All of the other 25 categories are strictly, you know, community nominated and, uh, you know, voted for the winners. Because you guys actually posted on the website the long list of the nominations. And there was a lot of duplicates in uh, in there and and i'm guessing that was because it was a free text feel i'm, I'm guessing because i i, I want to say i glanced at it ever so briefly and i want to say that there were a couple of different spellings of my name okay many of which I, thought, were I thought i corrected that ahead of time but no no what i was going to say is many of them were incorrect right and i'm guessing you that is part of what you guys do is to like scrub yes. through that to make yes. sure there isn't some other guy named reggie out there that the people that spelled it with two g's did indeed mean the reggie with one g i'm guessing that's part of what the committee correct. does yeah yes? some you know some channels have long names and somebody may only put the first piece of it or they spell it incorrectly and so yep. yes yeah, so that's part of it just making sure the the data that's submitted is accurate. I, I haven't. We haven't really come up with a better way because we want to want it to be an open nomination. Yep. Yep. Um, and so, and there's so many channels. I mean, I looked at that list of all of the nominated channels this year, and there were channels on there that I didn't know. You know that yep. that I now sub to because um, they just weren't on my radar. So, yep. um, you know, so that's yeah, but that's part of the committee function is to you know go through that and just make sure everything is you know accurate and. There's not two G's in, in Reggie. It, it's a lot of work, but I think by allowing it to be free form, you you have some transparency there, right? It, it, it's not just checking from the names and the channels that you know or the committee knows. It literally is open for people to be able to put that stuff in. And yeah, it makes more work for you guys to go back and scrub it. But there's the transparency there because you published the full list of all the names. At least that's what I felt yes, like. Yeah, yeah. And so that list is over... You know, there are some duplicates because somebody may have, you know, multiple live streams or they may be, you know, so they could have gotten nominations for, you know, one show or yep. multiple shows. And so yep. that's why they may appear multiple times on the list. But we want to just include wh whoever the, the community nominates. We want that to be public. And then really the um, the idea of that publishing that list is that maybe you can go find some channels that you're you're not aware of. So. I went through and included everybody's link. Uh, so if you click on any one of those channels in that nominated list, it'll take you to their YouTube channel or their Instagram so that you can go, you know, maybe discover some new channels. So um, there you go. Yeah. How many people are on the committee? You just, you just spoke about the committee a little no. bit at length. How many people are on there? So we have a total of 11, including, including myself. Wow. Um, and so it's, it's a, you know, it's, it's a good variety of people within the community. You know, we have some international people on the committee. So we want it to be just a, a representation of the the comic book community as a whole. Um, but, you know, keep it manageable. So it, like I said, it's, it's 11 of us. Um, and then if questions come up, it's something that I can't answer. I'll bring it to the committee and we'll, you know, we'll discuss it and, and come up with a decision. So after the community review period, you guys are going to announce the finalist. And I believe that that is taking place on August 25th. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. So the 25th is a Friday. Uh, we're going to do a live stream at 10 p.m. Eastern and reveal uh, reveal the finalist. And then the next day, the 26th, the finalist voting period opens and that runs until uh, mid mid November. And then December 2nd will be the live stream, uh, you know, the 2023 awards where we'll, uh, we'll announce, you know, crown crown the winners. There you go. You just answered three of my questions in a row. <laughs> Well, well done, sir, because part of it was, okay, so you're going to announce the finalist. 
when when uh, when are you announcing that one to confirm that? Then it was a question of, well, what is the voting period? You just hit that. And my my other question was going to be whether you guys were going to be doing a live stream extravaganza like you've done the last few years in which you reveal who the, the winners are. And it sounds like the answer is yes, 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 all the way across the board. Brian, where can people uh, get more information on the Comic Book Community Awards? Where can they vote? Break that down for us. Sure. So it's it's on our website. It's cbcawards.org. Uh, and so that's where, you know, the nomination list lives out there today. So if you can go check out that list and maybe find, you know, four or five channels that you're not familiar with and go go check them out. Uh, but the, the finalist voting will be on there active as the, the 26th of uh, this month. Uh, and then on Instagram, it's CBC Awards is the handle which you can follow where we, we you know, publish updates um, for, you know, any, any new news or anything that's coming out. There we go. Brian, I want to thank you, brother, for coming on. I can't wait to see all of the hilarious commercials that you guys come up with. <laughs> uh, I, I enjoy those commercials during the live stream, but also the little snippets that you guys put together on Instagram. So I'm looking forward to that. But thank you very much for coming on and giving us the updates on the Comic Book Community Awards. I appreciate it, Reggie. I appreciate your support and having me on each year to, to discuss it. So thanks Yeah, so brother. Much. Yeah, brother. It is my pleasure. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. All right. So uh, again, I felt bad that I canceled on, on Brian the other day, but I, I was, I just was not up to it. Even in last week's live stream, I was very uncomfortable. Uh, for those that don't know, um, I injured my wrist and I think I injured it throwing the, uh, the ball for my dog. I have a pin in my wrist. Uh, I, I, it was so bad that I, I went to go see a surgeon and I was on pins and needles, pardon the pun, uh, trying to figure out whether I was going to have surgery. And as soon as he said, you don't have to have surgery, I really didn't hear anything else after that. I was just ready to get out of there. Uh, I wore a brace for a couple of days after I saw the surgeon, I took some anti-inflammatory medications. I'm feeling a lot better today. Uh, but then I weed whacked, I weed whacked for a couple of hours. I had a lot of weeds in, on the property. So I weed whack and then I didn't feel good for a little bit, but uh, headed in the right direction. I think overall I am, I am healing quite nicely. So again, huge shout out to Brian for coming on to talk about the community, comic book community awards. Uh, th this is a, a really awesome, um, I think thing that uh, the community has an opportunity to participate in. And I am fortunate to have won uh, 10 of the Comic Book Community Awards over the last couple of years. No clue what's going to happen in the future, uh, but I am thankful for every single person that nominated the channel, that voted for, uh, for me, uh, and certainly for the people behind the scenes that organized everything and, and brought it to light. So uh, scrolling through some of the comments here to see where I am right now. looks like somebody was dropping some links in there. Um, Lee, that's uh, that's not funny, sir. That's that's not funny. He says it, it's called getting old. I pulled my shoulder by sleeping wrong. Welcome to. <laughs> I think I have a T-shirt that uh, that that was sent to me. Uh, by Mark. It was the Grumpy Old Man uh, Club. So I, I think I'm in very good company. Uh, but again, uh, I, I am feeling better and better generally, generally by by the day. Richard, how you doing, brother? It is good to see you. Uh, what were you pitching? So I, so my, my dog, I have uh, American Staffordshire Terriers. And one of them is really athletic, right? And so I have that long a ball tossing stick where you you hook the tennis ball in the end of it and you fling it but it, it was that motion of flinging it across the yard that i think popped my wrist and i think that that's why i was having trouble i also have trouble uh shaking hands because of the position and throwing that stick is very similar it's a similar kind of motion and i think that that's how i injured it but again feeling feeling a lot better uh despite the fact uh, that I'm getting older and older by the day. Good to see you, brother. I appreciate all you guys coming in and hanging out with us just a little. So uh, the, the thumbnail, put up a thumbnail dedicated to the guy that says that he doesn't like to watch my videos uh, and where, where I have thumbnails where I make silly faces. Uh, we're talking about uh, funny 
paper. We're talking about comics. And if we can't tolerate a funny face or two, then we definitely are in the wrong hobby. But on that thumbnail, I highlighted one of the other topics that I wanted to get to, which is the Blue Beetle. Couple of updates here. The director for the Blue Beetle recently stated that James Gunn and Peter Safran had little to no input in the final cut of the Blue Beetle that was put together. He, he did, however, say that both Peter and James were very supportive of the direction that the movie was going in. They seemed to like the vision and seemed to really, I guess, like what, what ultimately the Blue Beetle will become. In, in other articles that came out this week, there was some news uh, with regard to uh, the budget associated with the Blue Beetle. There, there are references that are saying that the Blue Beetle costs a lot less than Shazam. Uh, well, yeah, a lot less than Shazam, Black Adam, and also The Flash. And they're saying that reportedly the movie had a budget of $120 million, which is on the lower end of the spectrum for a lot of movies that are coming out. And to that point of being on the lower end of the spectrum, they are basically saying for this movie to be considered successful, it has to bring in around $240 million. And this takes into account production, marketing, and also distribution cost. And so I wanted to have somebody on the show to help me to make sense of what is happening with the Blue Beetle. And I decided to invite somebody on that already has tickets. They already have tickets to the Blue Beetle. So I think that they are somewhat invested into this. So I want to welcome to the show my buddy Chuck. It is good to see you. It's good to see you too. How's it going? Brother, I have zero complaints, Chuck. A lot of problems, but zero complaints that I'm going to burden you with tonight. Chuck, what do you think is behind the director's comments about James Gunn and Peter Safran's involvement? And I have a few reasons why I'm asking that, but I'll, I'll just blanketly ask, what do you think was behind those comments? Well, I think two things. One is that because this movie was mostly worked on before James Gunn got involved with things, you know, you sort of hit a level of sunk cost where is, is it really going investing another $30 million on resuits? Is that going to move the needle enough that you're going to make enough extra money yep. to justify it? It's not like flash which sounded like it needed to be completely retooled from the ground up and they only, you know, did the tires and, you know, instead I think they looked at blue beetle and said, you know, this is pretty good. It's good enough. We upgraded it from an HBO movie, yep. HBO direct streaming to a full blown movie. And I think the other thing there is, quite frankly, that gives a little bit of deniability to James Gunn. Mm. And for some reason, it goes out there and it just tanks. Yeah. Now, given that you mentioned that they spent $120 million on it, I think they only spent like $5 on the on the public relations side of it. <laughs> so you know, it may tank because nobody knows it's there. Yeah, but. they literally spent a couple of dollars and quarters. But here's, here's the thing. I mean, part of the reason, I asked you that question for a couple of reasons, right? Part of it is, was it being said to the point to put some distance between James Gunn and, and this movie with the possibility that the movie might not perform? The, the reality of the situation is that James, according to many people, is the worst thing to ever happen to the DCU, despite the fact that the DCU hasn't released a single movie yet. James is literally the worst thing ever. Thoughts? Well, all, <clears throat> all I can say is they haven't seen a lot of DC movies recently. Um, and, you know, I would just say the, the other thing is, you know, James Gunn, when he was at Marvel doing the Marvel movies, you know, they pretty much let him, you know, they, they put a little bit of, you know, constraints on him, but they didn't micromanage. Him. They said, James, you have a vision for the Guardians of the Galaxy. None of the rest of us have any idea who the hell Star Lord is. Excuse me. So you know, you just do your thing, and you know, so long as it doesn't get outside of whatever box we have, it's okay. Yeah. And I think James is trying to show that same type of creator respect, yeah. where he's saying, you know, okay, I know who Jaime Reyes is. I may have read some of the comics. You know what? We have a director here who has a clear vision for it. Mm. The vision fits the overall vision we have for DC. 
let's run with it. If it's a hit, we'll keep going with it. Right. And if it's not a hit, well, you know, it's not Batgirl. We at least saw it. <laughs> now, 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 what's interesting to your point about, about the vision and about creative freedom is that I've seen a couple of articles that have drawn some parallels between what James Gunn did with Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and Rocket Raccoon and that development of Rocket Raccoon mm -hmm. and potentially what we might get in Blue Beetle, where it appears that the Blue Beetle is, is not some space opera with, with crazy special effects, but it's actually based upon the family. The Reyes family appears to be the focal point of the Blue Beetle, which might also be why it was on the, the cheaper end of things at 120 million. Can you talk a little bit about maybe the similarities between the character development, the focus on family with Guardians of the Galaxy and the family aspect of Blue Beetle? Well, I certainly think that's a theme that really resonates with James. Mm. And, you know, and what we've seen with that, and you know, even with the Ms. Marvel TV show, which got rave reviews for Ms. Marvel's family, you know, yep. that got really rave reviews on how it portrayed her culture, how the family was very strong, very supportive. And, you know, some of these early reviews for Blue Beetle are saying similar things about the best parts of the movie are the Blue Beetle family. Yep. Now, if you want to be a cynic, you could say because there's only three people in the live chat right now who, who can name six Blue Beetle villains, you know, so it's not like you had a whole lot to pick from. And you're one of them. What? <laughs> anyway, we're not going to get into that. Um, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll let Mark Andrews do the rest of it. So, um, but, you know, the, the fact of the matter is there, you know, it's not like Superman where you can sit there and pick a villain or Batman and base the movie around the villain and then say, oh, yeah, by the way, we got this guy in a bat suit running around. Yep. You yep. know, while we're yep. really focused on, you know, the duality of, of, you know, Harvey Dent or something. You know, here instead, we've got to say we're going to look at Jaime Reyes. We're going to look at, you know, the, his character, his family, you know, really set that in the culture that he's in. Yep. And then if it's really popular, then we can expand out and leave some tangents as to where we can go from there. And there, there's a chance that that family dynamic will play incredibly well on the screen for families that want to go see it. And certainly with the, the Latino community, it may also mm -hmm. play incredibly well. I mean, to some degree or another, Black Panther was a success possibly because Brown people went to go see it. Right. And, yeah. and Hispanic people went to go see it because of that, the inclusion of, of that character. There was a lot of criticism that came with that as well with changing that, but it worked out well at the box office in your mind, Chuck, does this movie have a chance to be successful? And I say that because the, the range of predictions for how much money this this movie can bring in is somewhere between a hundred million which could be considered a flop and 300 million which which is a big range right. thoughts well i think a lot of it's going to depend on what you we see for the crit for the audience ratings on it so it's not just going to be a money thing but it's also going to be what is the response yeah. you may get a very passionate audience behind it yep. who loves the character uh, you know, the, the young man doing uh, Jaime Reyes already has a built-in following with Corba, Co Cobra Kai. Yep. You know, if he turns out to be a real star, but no one comes to see it because they only spent $6 on a bunch of sock puppets for the, uh, for the advertising budget, you know, is that his fault? You know, they may look at it having a 99% or 98% Rotten Tomatoes rating. Yep. And the people going to see it are giving it A's and A minuses and everything. Yep. And then it comes over to streaming and it builds up a strong contingent on streaming. And, you know, James Gunn may go, you know what? This didn't make as much money as we wanted. But given that we didn't really push it. Yeah. You know, he can show up in a, in a, in a Super Friends movie or, you know, uh, we can do a blue gold, blue and gold movie with Booster Gold, which yep. would be a lot of fun. That'd be cool. You know, yeah. we don't have to toss him out the window yet. Yeah. And I you mean, know, right now it's not like spending three hundred million dollars on a movie and having it make less. Right. Exactly. But I, exactly. I interrupted you. Sorry for that. No, I got excited. Right. The other thing is, you know, the, the numbers have been trending up on what the projections for the movie were. Yes. Because like two weeks ago, the projection was it was only gonna make like fifteen million dollars the first week. Before that, it was ten. That's right. It you was know, ten. 
you know, and now my daughter who's working in movie theater this summer tells me, you know, dad, we've actually got four premium theaters where it's going to be. Wow. And you, it looks like some of them are even going to be sold out. Well, you know, if you see that replicated, not just in Raleigh, but, you know, you know, probably New York and Los Angeles, clearly, but, you know, maybe even in Duluth, some people will show up. Yep. And, you know, all of a sudden it makes, say, 35 or 40 million the opening weekend. It's got some well, momentum. That's right. If you're projecting 30 million and it makes 35 or 40 million, well, I could hear you spinning that as this movie is a success. It overperformed. Yep. It did well. And then if it has legs the next week, yep. because it's not like it's competing against a whole lot of stuff right now. I mean, no offense. Everyone who's wanted to see Barbie, except for my wife, um, has seen it at this point. Barbie you know? Barbie is still sucking up dollars, brother. That, oh. that, that movie is just still performing. It's impressive. I think it's what? The number one are the highest grossing movie for Warner Brothers yeah. bypassing uh, the Batman movie now. Right. Which and is ridiculous. It's about, and it's about to bypass Super Mario's as the highest grossing one this year, which Crazy. is just, which, which yeah, which is nuts. And my, my, yeah, my daughter tells me that they, they still have packed showings of Barbie. <laughs> those those people know. are probably watching the second, third time by this point, you know? Well, there, yeah, there is that, but you know, but a blue beetle in that environment can carve itself out a nice little niche here. Yep. And we can drown out all the people who want to see all comic book movies fail because that's a very popular thing, as you know, right now on the internet. Everybody wants to see, well, they want to see Marvel burn, definitely, but they kind of want to see DC. They want to see DC continue to burn just because that's what they expect it to do. It's the cool um, thing. It's a cool thing to say right. that James Gunn is the worst and that DC is trash and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I want the movie to be successful because I want the movie to be successful. Right. In, in my mind, potentially the movie could be harmed by the ongoing strike. And the fact that mm -hmm. I don't think that, you know, the actors are going to be out there promoting the movie, but, but fingers crossed, that the audience scores are good, the word of mouth is good, that it does exceed expectations, and I think it can build some momentum. And, and they're saying internationally, it has potential. In certain right. parts of the world, it has a lot of potential, especially if that family component is authentic, the same way mm -hmm. that Miss Marvel's family component was very authentic. It was not uh it was not some cheap service to to that culture. It was it was true. And uh, who who is the dad in there? George George Lopez. Uh, George Lopez playing the uncle. Yeah, he's funny. So oh yeah, humor goes a long way. Like true humor goes a long way. Not maybe Love and Thunder, but and, go ahead. And, no, and no offense to the Batman fans, he's not wrong about Batman. That's all I'm gonna say. He's not he's not wrong about Batman. Um, <laughs> and I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but he's not wrong. So yeah. you know, and I will tell you, someone who's a fan of, I like the Blue Beetle. I mean, you know, I've been a fan since the Charlton. Day. Yeah, I, I've been a fan since I first saw him in, you know, Crisis on Infinite Earths and then had to go, you know, in the back, back, back part of the store where they had the Charlton books that nobody ever went to, yeah. you know, and, and I started digging through those things to, to find more stuff. You know, I want to see it succeed. You know, J.M. Demetrius created uh, Jaime Reyes. He is, uh, I think, an underrated writer mm -hmm. for the most part. You know, he knows the Blue Beetle characters, having written Ted Cord for a long time in Justice League. I want to see it succeed just for that reason yeah. alone right there. Yeah. Because there are really good people who were involved with it, and we want to see them get the credit that they deserve. There you, you go. Know, and have that success. It's like a dream come true. I have to imagine to see something you created come to life on a screen. And and, and, and people that are, are, you know, wishing for the downfall – of, of these movies, I, I don't get it. I, I don't know how you celebrate the the failure of other people. I don't know how that is a win for people, but that that, that is one of the trendy things that is happening right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but but Chuck, as we get get ready to wrap up here, brother, any uh, parting thoughts and any predictions for the opening weekend worldwide numbers, not U.S. numbers, worldwide numbers? Any predictions? Uh, I hope it will make over 40 million. Um, I think it can. Um, I know we, my family's been looking forward to it really since it got announced. Did you actually and buy tickets if your kid yeah, works no, at the no, theater? We, 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 have, we have bought tickets. In fact, <laughs> in fact my son tech did it in the group text day saying, I'm not going to be able to go. My work scheduled me. Okay. So they're, they're currently out phoning a friend right now to, 
to, to pawn some some stranger off with us in movie theater. So, um, so if you get a random text message from a nine one nine number, that that's what it is. I'm just letting you know. Um, <laughs> but you know, it we've all been looking forward to it, and you know, and and we're not just going to recite about the movie, but you know, representation matters. Yeah. And yeah, and you alluded to that earlier, and we can't say that enough. Representation matters, and you know, for a whole generation of kids, you know, Jaime is going to be their T'Challa or, you know, whatever, and that's someone they can look up to, and they can say, "That's me." Yeah, yeah, I can be that. Now, I don't want a giant bug on my back, but I, I but I can be that. You know, um, brother, brother, if you're gonna be a superhero, there, there's gonna be some downside. The downside might be a bug on your back. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't write the rules. You know. As long as somebody doesn't come after you with a giant broom to knock it off, you're okay, there you man. Go. There you go. Chuck, it, it is always uh, good to see you. It is always good to see your, uh, to hear your perspective. I want to thank you for joining and, and sharing your thoughts with us. You'll have to uh, to let me know what you think of the movie when you see it. I think it drops on, what, the 18th, right? A couple of days yeah. away, I think. And, and we've got we've got a noon showing on Saturday we're going to. There you go. Fingers yeah. crossed that it comes out. Fingers crossed that you guys enjoy it. But like, like I said, keep me posted on, on your thoughts. All right. We'll do. Take care. Take care, brother. Bye-bye. All right. So my man, Chuck, uh, he's the one that turned me on to Charlton. I went digging in the hundred K collection as a result of talking with him about Charlton comics. And sure enough, I found a, a very small stockpile of Charlton books in the comic book collection. A uh, huge shout out to my man, Chuck. He, he, he likes some obscure stuff. And, and uh, it's not necessarily my stuff, but as I said before, that's one of the cool things about this hobby is that we can all come together and appreciate the commonality that we have, even though we all like slightly different stuff. That That is where the magic is in my mind. Um, so I think we covered off on the Blue Beetle really well. I had a graphic that, that I was going to show, uh, but but Chuck did a really good job of, of representing itself. So Blue Beetle's... <laughs> <laughs> Blue Beetle saves these. I really, you know, I'm one of those people, man, that I want every movie that comes out to do well. Like, I, I like why why would I want the movie to fail? Like that just that just doesn't make sense, right? Because in that sense, everybody suffers. The actors suffer, they don't make money. The people behind the scenes that you know could have gotten you know additional work as a result of having something be successful and then go on to maybe have a few other installments don't get that work. Um, you know, celebrating failure, I I really don't get it. I don't get it in any way, shape, or form, but that is um that is definitely one of the themes that we we hear about. I'm scrolling through some of that. Chuck says, my daughter doesn't get that much of a discount on tickets, he says. I, I had to ask whether he actually bought the tickets. He told me he bought tickets, and then I forgot his kid worked there. And I'm like, did you really buy the tickets, Chuck, or did she, is she going to prop open the back door and you guys are going to slide in? I have to ask these, these clarifying questions. Scrolling through some of the comments, I think I'm all Charlton made. Um May peacemaker. Yes, indeed. Yes. Yes, indeed. And again, one of the, one of the cool things, you know, Chuck made some really good points here about uh, James Gunn and, and the keys that were essentially given to him to kind of run with it because there isn't this massive following for guardians of the galaxy, at least when it first came out, he could do whatever he wanted with it. And, and he made some success out of that. You know, I watched Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and I really enjoy what they did with Rocket Raccoon. I am I'm not a big Rocket Raccoon fan. They actually made me care about Rocket Raccoon. I may have even shed a tear. It could have been dust in my eye, but there may have been a tear that fell from my eye as a result of of what they did. And I think if you have some authentic writing where people actually are invested in the character that is being seen on screen, I think that that goes a long way. And there's the possibility that Blue Beetle will have some of that substantive writing where you are actually invested in the characters, invested in the family. And if they can do that, then I think it bodes well for this movie to not be dead on arrival the way that a lot of people are predicting that it will be. So we will see how it all plays out. All right. So one of the other things uh, that I want to talk about is the fact that there is a new grading company out there. There is a new 
grading company that is out there, but it is not for comics. It is not for toys. It is not for VHS or any of that other stuff. It is actually for vinyl records. I didn't know that this was a thing, but it, it is now a thing. There is a new company called Tune In Grading that is grading vinyl records. And the FAQ for the company says this. They, they, they say, your records have value. And in many cases, a graded and encapsulated record is an investment piece similar to other graded collectibles like sport cards, comics, and video games, as well as traditional investment items such as stock and real estate. And as I went through this website for tune in grading, I'll be honest, I thought that I was reading uh, the EGS website or the CBCS website or the CGC website. It read like a traditional type of, of company, uh, a company's website that does grading. They they were founded in 2022, so it wasn't that long ago, but they were like, you know, they, they were using language like they have been in the game for a long period of time. So I applaud them for that. Uh, but I wanted to have somebody on the show to talk with me a little bit about this new grading company. And I wanted to invite Doug on. My buddy, the, the Doug is an expert in all things. He also <laughs> found this website and sent it to me. Doug, first, how are you doing? Second, how the heck did you find this website? Well, first, I've been having internet issues tonight, so I am praying they are done right now. <laughs> it's the so that's how it, I'm doing. It is the gibbon that is doing it. He strikes again. <laughs> oh, gosh. And how I found it, um, there was a, a YouTube channel that's uh, just focused on broad investing, and I saw a thumbnail that mentioned um, grading and records. And I said, wait a minute, we talked about this like two years ago. So I, I clicked on the video and just uh, and it mentioned the website. It didn't give a lot of details about it, but that's how I found it and, and looked it up and sent it your way. When you sent it to me, Doug, you said we spoke about this before. I have a feeling that this is the situation where you spoke about it and I just listened because I don't, I don't remember this. I'll be honest with you, brother. I, you know, it's to the point where I've created so much content that I, I really can't remember it all. Um, <laughs> refresh my memory. What the heck did we talk about two years ago when it came to graded records? I, I think we had a conversation speculating on what other collectibles um, grading might touch at mm. some point. Mm. Uh, and I think it was right when the VHS grading was was coming out. So and we threw out a few things uh, that that we thought made sense. And, and one of them was vinyl. So. Mm. Yeah, and, and again, you you threw it out. I just probably nod in my head. Um, but over the years, though, we've seen grading companies, to your point, come up for uh, action figures. We've seen them for video games, VHS. I just had a conversation yesterday with a guy that really focuses on uh, concert posters, graded mm -hmm. concert posters from CGC. And now we're looking at records. Do, do you... I don't think you're you're a record vinyl guy, but do you think that there's really an appetite for people to to grade their records? You know, it's interesting. I think that um it like comic books, it's a type of collectible that people might in initially assume you wouldn't want to get slabbed because yeah. if you slab a comic, you can't read the comic. Yep. And audiophiles, vinyl collectors tend to really like to listen to their vinyl. Yep. Now, with, with that said, just like there are comic collectors, there are investors as well. And, and collectors and investors kind of overlap. Yep. And I, I am not a vinyl collector. Um, my sister-in-law is. But I was looking up sales values. And uh, an article that I read gave like the top 10 vinyl sales. And they range from a hundred thousand dollars to over a million dollars. Are you so, serious? Yeah. And, and these were very rare pressing. These weren't ones that you would have just, 
you picked know, up at, in at the eighties, picked up thriller. Yeah. Exactly. You but, know, but, but, but still a hundred thousand to a million dollars for a record. Like yep. I knew people collected records, but I had no appreciation for the values associated with them. That's crazy. Yeah. And I, I think that's about as common as action comics one, you know, at that level. But the reality is anytime something has a natural collector base and gains that much value, uh, there's a need for authentication and mm. third party authentic auth authentication. So whether or not it will be popular enough by the general vinyl collecting community, I don't know, but it, it does seem to make sense that there is a need for this, given those type of evaluations. What's interesting is the question that I that I may have asked just now about uh, tuned in grading, which is a, I guess, a first of its kind vinyl record grading company might be a similar question that someone asked about CGC. Uh, back in the in the in the 2000s, in the early 2000s, they might have been like, "Do do people want to grade comics? Is there an appetite for that?" It, it's interesting that when you read their website, it is very reminiscent of CGC, CBCS in terms of how they're referring to themselves, how they're thinking about this as preservation and investment potential. It, it was, and maybe they they went a little bit further into the investment side than maybe CGC or, or CBCS do. Um, but but they're definitely thinking about encapsulation for the purpose of preservation and investment, which I found fascinating. And again, it may this may not be there may not be a ton of action comics out there, but there's a lot of books below action comics that are slab worthy. And that could be mm -hmm. very much the case for these vinyl records. I there was agree. no question there. I was just going to pause to see whether you wanted to say something smart. I don't know, Doug. <laughs> I, I agree with that. <laughs> there, there you go. So, um, Doug, one of, one of the comments that I made to you when you sent this over to me, one of my initial comments was about the label. And, and I want to put the label on screen so that people can actually see this. And again, for those folks that are coming in a little late, we are talking about Tune In Grading, which is a, a third-party grading company for vinyl records. This is something I had never heard about before. The company was started by, I think, like four friends or colleagues in 2022, uh, and, and, and this is their website. It is a very, very basic website, but I want I want to zoom in here, if I can, to this label. Doug, I, I have thoughts about this label, but I'm going to reserve my thoughts to hear your thoughts on this label. I think our thoughts are probably pretty similar. Um, that it's fugly? Let's say that it's fuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say graphically, it leaves uh, room for, for improvement. And especially with how, just like with comic books, um, album covers are, are beautiful pieces of, of art. Yeah. Um, so I, I think this is where EGS has really gotten it right in comics that, um, a company like this could take a page from, mm. uh, look for some customization. I understand, you know, use of colors to, you know, indicate different things is, is, is popular as well because of, of CGC and the example they set, but I'd really like to see. Um, like EGS, I'd like to see some of the cover art reflected in the background. Now, mm. from an information standpoint, I love it. Um, they have subgrades like uh, card, uh, sports and trading cards uh, use, um, which really isn't a thing, at least yet, in, in comics grading that, uh, that I think is, is a great value added. It really explains... Um, the overall grade more. So I do like that. You and I absolutely disagree on that one. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to see subgrades on a comic in any way, shape or form. Uh, but, but I do, uh, to your point, I do see the benefit in that for trading cards. And yeah. I also see it here for the album, which I, I think is, is, is cool. Um, it, it is not an attractive label. There is no doubt about it. And to your point, maybe there's some lessons that they can learn from EGS to like make the label look sexy and, and actually leverage some of the imagery from the album itself to make it a more integrated type of presentation. Uh, but 
they have some interesting elements here, right? They have the subgrades over to the right hand side. They have the grade over there. They have the details of the of the of the album in the middle, which I think is really cool. Uh, yeah. There looks like a holographic uh, uh, image or sticker in the far left, and then a QR code. Uh, it would be dope if that QR code actually linked to an audio file of the label. I don't know if that's what it does, but I don't want to see graders notes. I'd love to be able to hear the audio in high def because now I have a graded album that I can't listen to, but I have a QR code where I can, I can listen to it and, and enjoy what's on the inside of the slab. I, I'm taking from your thumbs up that maybe you had a similar thought. I 100% agree. And I think it's actually something that someday a, um, a comic grading company could link up with some publishers and do yep. something similar. Now there are some rights issues with older companies, but with DC Marvel, the ones that are still around, you could do that. Yep. And it would be cool. Doug, I literally Absolutely. made that up on the fly as I was looking at that QR code, right? So when, when you gave me the thumbs up, I was like, oh, I must have said something good. Um, but but this is a cool thing, man. I I pass pastor <laughs> the pastor, no one will want to display that because of the fugly label. Comic book <laughs> collectors are very particular when it comes to labels. Like I've never bought or not bought a comic because of the label. I'll just be honest yeah. with you guys, right? Um, but but I, I get where people are coming from. As soon as I saw that label, I was like, ooh, that could be a challenge, right? It, yeah. it looks like a couple of friends came together and were like, hey, let's encapsulate with no real consideration, honestly, for the the presentation of that website. It's a little lacking. And yep. the label, I think, is a little lacking. Um, but this is also a, a first attempt, right? This is a, a yeah. new endeavor. If it catches on, they have a lot of room for future investment, future improvement. Um, and it'll be interesting to see whether this catches on. I don't have a record player or a single record in my entire house, but I know a lot of folks that absolutely love vinyl. Absolutely love it. So yeah. again, Doug, thank you for sending this over to me, brother. I appreciate you um, always flagging this, this interesting stuff and then reminding me of the stuff that we discussed that you said that you then give me credit for. I'm very appreciative <laughs> of that. I'm very appreciative. Hey, at some point, brother, you're going to have to tabulate uh, all of the uh, blog posts and videos that we did in the past where we highlighted key books that suddenly caught on years after we spoke about them at some point tabulate that and maybe we'll do a regroup of, of some shape or form fair. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I think I can get on that in the next month. No, no rush, brother. I'm always around. I have nothing but time on my hand. Now that my wrist is working, I'm nothing but time. Dog. <laughs> All right, brother. I'm going to be good an empty nester soon. <laughs> Take care. It's going to be nice, Doug. You're, what are you doing with that room? Is that a new comic book room? Is that what's going to happen with this room? No. no? No, she, therapy Pam room let for it happen. my wife. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> poor, poor Doug. Poor Doug. Anyway, brother, it is good to see you. I appreciate you. Take care. All right. So what is that? A comment here. What is that? Uh, any new, any early news on Garage Con? Brother, I am. So for those that did not see my live on um, on Instagram the other day, a lot of the team for Isolation and Marcus are planning to be at New York Comic Con. We are still working out the days and the times and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but a lot of the team, the, the writers will be there, some of the artists, the letterers, and, and, and hopefully I will be there as well. I don't know exactly where we're going to be, but we will be at New York Comic Con. So if you are somewhere in the area, if you've picked up copies of Isolation, you definitely want to uh, stay tuned for more details. Garage Con, I think, is going to happen. When is it going to happen? I don't know. Uh, there were some people pushing me to do it in October. I don't know if we're going to do October versus stick with the November time frame, a week or two out from Thanksgiving. Um, I, I, I'm leaning towards that. I'm leaning towards that, uh, but more to come on that one. All right, Marcus and vinyl is the best way to listen to music. Again, I don't own a record player. I don't even own a single record, but I've heard that true audiophiles 
say what Mark just said, that vinyl is the only way to go. So I'm going to defer to him on that one. There are several record grading companies in Goldmine Magazine. Milt, Milt uh, again, another one of these people that has a wide range of interest dropping knowledge. I did not know about that. So there you go. Thank you, brother, for sharing that. Um, scrolling through some of the comments here. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. I think I think I may be all caught up. Um, New York Comic Con only Thursday or Sunday available. Brother, we're not buying tickets. We're doing some other stuff. We're we're gonna we're gonna slide around and do some other stuff. But fingers crossed again, fingers crossed uh that the teams will be there both for Marcus and also for isolation. As a reminder, cover A, you guys may not have seen this on Instagram. Cover A of isolation is completely sold out. And is it is is it a factor of manufacturer scarcity? A little bit, a little bit. Uh we we ordered enough to cover pre-sales plus a surplus. I had a comic shop that ordered uh, a little late and I had to bundle up orders to, to hook them up. Um, so that depleted a lot of the inventory. And then we had a couple of books that were damaged in transit, just part of the normal thing. And anytime you get books, anytime you mail books, books are going to be lost as a result of that. There are no more cover A of isolation issue for available outside of comic shops. There are some comic shops like JAF that still have it. Uh, Captain Can Comics up in Canada, they have it. Um, outside of that, there are no other copies. I do, however, have premium covers, cover B and cover C. I had I had a total of 24 copies uh, yesterday. Some of those copies have sold. There are copies of those available. Uh, they are a little bit more expensive, but they are available on swolgerpublishing.com, as is cover uh, issue one and issue two. Issue one and issue two are available on the website as well. If you guys haven't picked up a copy, you can actually find them there. And again, we're going to potentially be at New York. Well, we're going to be at New York Comic Con and potentially we will have some other things available there. What those things are, I honestly do not know. You'll have to show up at New York Comic Con and see what it is that we can make happen. All right. So hopefully, hopefully that covers off on everything. I want to give a huge shout out to each one of my guests. Each and every one of them brought something special to the table. They delivered. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this live stream. If you did and you haven't yet given the video a thumbs up, I want to encourage you to do that right now. If you are watching and you haven't subscribed to the channel, I absolutely want to encourage you to do that as well. Again, another shout out to comicspriceguide.com for their continued uh, sponsorship of the channel. Put together a really cool video with them that was released earlier this week. So if you have not seen that, I encourage you guys to check that out. All right, with that said, we're going to wrap this up. As always, if you want to reach out to me, you can do that on Instagram at Reggie Collects. Take care. Straight off meditation, we was concaving until we had that eternal dialogue that created our dialect. Now we in distinct rooms of pure souls, having them conversations, synergy and combinations. You fly and we waiting, Indian style in the gold temple of greatness. When you follow the North Star, you coming for the education. This is my audio book, these rhymes are just the imagery. More like an audiographic novel or a memoir. About a young MC making timeless music with his mentor. I pray I grasp my letters, nothing was meant to last forever.